today <clears throat> Please go. you know it is very easy to preach about revival but uh, basically revival is very personal if the revival does not touch our personal life that does not make any sense we can talk about revival awaits and awaits but the real revival comes that really touch me that really transform me as a result you know my family they they will know whether the real deep revival happening to my personal life one of the pre requisites you know, of revival is always a personal preparation you know if you want a flight to land in a certain place if there is no airport if there is no runway the flight cannot land so it is always needed a flight to to land somewhere so runway has to be ready bible says when elijah when he restored the altar god sent his fire upon the altar so as a as a pastor of bika church this morning time my responsibility about the church is to make a runway so that the revival can touch down in this congregation how many of you can say praise the lord praise, praise the lord there is no way a pastor cannot bring a revival anyone sitting here cannot bring a revival only holy spirit can bring a revival but only one thing what we can do we have to prepare ourselves being as a pastor i have to prepare myself being as a, uh, a believer and the elder and the board you have to prepare for a revival then only god can bring a revival in our personal life hallelujah uh, this uh, morning i am going to preach uh, uh, about uh, a revival from a very a uh, very powerful word which uh, you we usually mention when we usually pray that is from book of lamentation chapter 5 can you bring a mic to here uh, book of lamentations chapter 5 verse number 21 book of lamentation chapter 5 verse number 21 the bible says restore us to you yourself o lord that we may be restored renew our days of our old probably somebody can read in malayalam so i know that verse is very familiar to everyone ah. right every revival begins from one condition return back to god when we return back to god the revi- the real revival happen to our personal life right we um before i share from this word i i will go with the background of this words itself probably book of lamentations written by book of, you know the same writer which wrote jeremiah of course um jeremiah is the writer of this um, book basically um he prophesied in the land of uh, jerusalem in the land of jerusalem israel 40 years he prophesied for a revival at the same time he was prophesying about um that the babylonians are coming and uh, going to captive your land he prophesied more than more than 10 uh, 10 times which uh, uh, when i was reading book of jeremiah i found out more than 10 times he prophesied the same message 
more than 40 years, not even one year, one and a half year or two years, he prophesied 40 years. The people in the land of Israel, they thought, no, that is not going to happen. Because they, 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 they believe because they are the children of God or they are the priesthood or, you know, just like we Pentecostal says, though we, they are the holy nation. So that is not going to happen. Never, never, ever. Our land, our city is not going to be destroyed at any cost. Jerusalem temple, no way. That is not going to be happened. But Jeremiah was keep on prophesying, 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 prophesying about the coming destruction of uh, Jerusalem. So as a result, people um, called him as prophet of doom, basically. We, you know, we know he's a prophet of uh, tears or weeping prophet because the reason also, most of his messages are with the tears and with the sorrow. The reason, wherever he goes, people usually persecute him. Just like we heard this morning time. In the Old Testament, I think, except uh, even Isaiah, no one had a good reputation in those days. Most of them were persecuted very badly. So I don't want to go further with that background of Jeremiah, so my time will go. Um, so now he prophesied um, uh, 40 years at last, now they, at the year of uh, BC 607 or 606, Babylonian Nebuchadnezzar came and sieged the land. Not only one time, BC 606, 597, then again 587, three times, they came and sieged the land and uh, the land, the temple was destroyed at, the, at the BC 587 by Nebuchadnezzar and all the youths in the land were, you know, taken into captivity. Right. Now, the land is going through some tough time. They are literally, the people in the land, they were crying out. They're lamenting. So, this prophetical book is talking about that background, basically. So, in order to understand what is basically happening on that land, I will just go very quickly. Chapter, um, probably uh, somebody can help me with the reading. Uh, chapter 5, verse number um, 2. Somebody can read verse number 5, verse number 2. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens. Alright. Yeah. So, the Bible says, uh, the word says, our inheritance has been turned over to strangers. That means... Uh, they lost all their wealth. Verse number three. We have become orphans. We have become orphans and waves. Our mothers are like widows. Oh, now, you know, they lost their loved ones. They became orphans. That means they lost their loved ones. Verse number four. We pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. Now see, they have to pay for the water they drink. That means in those days, Water was free. Right. So that means economy got ruined. So much inflation rate. The water is not more, no more free. Struggling with economy. Verse number five. They, per they pursue at our heels. We labor and have no rest. See, they worn out with the work. But no rest. Life is became so much restless. Verse number six. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. So they now, they lost their freedom. Now, the land of Egypt or Assyria, you know, people in the neighboring countries captured them and there is no more freedom in the land. Verse number seven. Our fathers sinned and are no more, mm. but we bear their iniquities. Now, the people in the land says they are carrying the iniquities of their fathers. Verse number 8. 
Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. Slaves rule over us. That means that never happens. Usually, master has to rule over the slaves. But it has it it is happening reversal. That means role reversal happening now. Things are totally became chaos, chaotic. Go ahead. Next words. We get our bread at the risk of our lives. See. The life became risky. There is no place for peace. The life itself became risky. Any time, any can, anything can happen in the land. Verse number ten. Our skin is as hot as an oven. That means they lost their beauty. Verse number eleven. They ravished the women in Zion, the, mm. ma the maidens in the cities of Judah. Okay, Roy, verse number 11, in our Malayali context, I can say, uh, the land was under the custody of Lao Jihad. The young women were taken into captive. Verse number 12. Princes were hung up by their hands and elders were not respected. Elders usually considered as a symbol of wisdom, basically. And now, verse number 12 mentioned that there is no respect for the elders. That means the wisdom was not respected in the land. Verse number 13. Young men ground at the millstones. Boys staggered uh, under loads of wood. So that means it's very clear the land is under slavery. Young men, it's working hard, 24 into 7. And the land is under slavery. Verse number 14. The elders have, have ceased gathering at the gate and the young men from their music. No music in the land. There is no music. That means music always brings joy. That means there is no music. That means no joy. So that the same words, verse number 15 also says, the joy of our heart has ceased. That means there is no more joy. They cannot sing anymore. They cannot have any more sing songs. 16. The crown has fallen from, <coughs> our, gra from our head. Woe to us for we have they sinned. They have sinned. And verse number 17. Because of this our heart is faint. Because so yeah, my translation says their heart became sick. They became sick. I just, you know, chapter 1 on, I can, I can describe about the suffering they are going through. The land is going utter chaos situation. Utter despair situation. <laughs> there is no more joy even in the land. Sometimes, even I was thinking, no, Israel is a God-chosen people. Then how come... This land went into this such a deadly situation. Sometimes we think, you know, we are the royal priesthood, holy nation, and we are the precious people in God's sight. Then why all these things are happening into my personal life, into our personal family life? You know, when I was studying and meditating about this whole book of lamentations because of a time um, let me figure out two reasons what god wanted to do with these people god has a god has a special plan in the midst of all this difficult situation god has a special plan for these people the first reason the first plan of god which we see on chapter 1, verse number 1, uh, one uh, probably I can say, probably somebody who is uh, doing with the PowerPoint, probably they can put another slide. The first reason what uh, it's mentioned there, he wants to return to the covenantal relationship. God wants to bring back people into a covenantal relationship. You know, covenant, that word, it's always 
comes with the marriage, right? That is a very easy word for us to relate with that. So chapter 1, verse number 1, somebody can read. How lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow is she who was so great. So now, chapter 1, again describing about Israel. And now, when the prophet is describing about Israel, he used the word there very deliberately. That word which Esther already mentioned. What was that? Widow. Speed out. Widow. Vidova. That means widow. That means widowa. Means she had a husband before, or she had a husband. Now she, no more husband, or husband passed away. Something happened. She is a widow now. Again, one more words to prove that point. One verse number um, no Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah, chapter two, verse number two. Book of Jeremiah, because the same writer wrote Book of Jeremiah 2, chapter 2, verse number 2. Yes. Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. All right. So, very clearly mentioned that I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through the land not sown. So here it's mentioned, now God consider Israel as a, his wife. You know, when I was meditating about this, hope you're with, coming with me. <coughs> There are different relationships in the world. Relationship with you know, parents, you know, dad and son. I, 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 I like my son. I love my son. In the same way, even if he became the president of the United States, or he, even if he does not become anything, I love him. My love towards him never changed. Same love. Never change. At the same time, one relationship in the world will keep on change upside down. Can you tell me? Come on, speak it out. People, those who already got married, they can say, never ever, James Sand said. But it will keep on change. It, it can go up and down. But one thing has to make clear, you know, you know, you know I, when I was thinking about this word, I was th thinking about uh, many of you, those who are going to jump into this well in coming months. <laughs> One important thing to keep your relationship stronger, that, you know, there is one thing. Our priority should not change. You know, when you got married with someone, your first priority change. Until then, you had a different priorities. That moment on, your priority change. She or he became your first priority. Rest everything is negotiable. Everything is secondary. Priority never change. In the same manner, okay. So that is a, that is very secret, okay. It's, I'm giving you. So after 12 years of marriage life, priority should not change. If priority change, there is a problem. You know, you know, one more thing, you know, if you want to, of course, most of you, your parents got married. If you ask them, they all will say with one thing, our relationship became more stronger more powerful, more richer, more intimate for last uh, 10 years, for last 12 years for me, or you can say 20 years or 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. If that relationship becoming, if that relationship is not getting stronger, you know, it is a high time to go and see a marriage counselor. 
Yeah, that is a very automatic process. Once you know sunburn, you know, the gap between both, you know, becoming lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser, and uh, you're so much intimacy, so much common space you get, and the intimacy became very much stronger. But there is a disadvantage also. That's what I, I wanted to tell this story. Because now God considers Israel as his wife. That means, that means God's first priority is Israel. At the same time, God is always... Come on. Those who are sleeping. God is... Asking same response from Israel. Your first priority should be mine alone. If I am your first priority, you should love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. The intimacy will become stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, the problem with the nowadays you know, many of uh, us uh, serving God for uh, some other reasons, not about the BK Church, people, those who are outside the BK Church. They're serving God for, you know, just like uh, they considered uh, God as a booster shot or, a, you know, you know, vaccine. You know, the thing is that when I am going through real trouble, I need a vaccine, right? When I go through real tough time, just like a magic wand, God is like a magic wand. So, so God can bring something for me. You know, God can strengthen me when I'm going through some weakness. You know, that does not work with this kind of this relationship. This is a covenantal relationship. God is not a magic wand. Am I right? Kenneth is laughing and he got some other message too. No, all right. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we have to understand our relationship with God. This is a covenantal relationship. Nothing can compare with uh, this relationship in our personal life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, what happened basically? The Bible says as a result of uh, of, you know, let me go further. Let me conclude very quickly. You know, probably you remember the story what I said last week. God was asking Hosea to go and marry a, a woman, harlot woman. The same thing, we explained it. You know, and God was showing that same relationship with uh, his people. And what happened with the harlot after he conceived three children. He went back again. No, he went back again with their, her lovers. Praise God. And in this morning time, God wants us to return to the covenant relationship. Praise the Lord. Covenant relationship. You know, um, can I go a little bit further? You know, <clears throat> The people, you know, as I already said, Israel, they have only one husband, that was Yahweh. But people, those who live in the neighboring countries, they have different husbands. Just like Assyrians or Egyptians or uh, uh, Babylonians, they have different husbands. That means uh, for the fertility, they have a fertility cult. For prosperity, they have a prosperity cult. For education in India, we can very much relate, Jonah, right? Uh, for uh, education, either, either, or Saraswati, for um, fertility, Parvati and Dono, whatever it is, Lishmi, right, whoever it is. I'm like a Christian side on Darith, Lidina Kupatega, Sambogolode, Pala Devangalana, Paladino. What happened? Even though these people in the land Israel, they lived. Under the shadow of the Almighty, when situation comes in their life, they went after their lovers, those fertility cults, 
those prosperity cults just for the time being just for for the temporary pleasures just for the temporary blessings in their personal life as a result what happened now praise the lord she became widow amen now god want us to come back into the covenant the relationship hallelujah the second point i wanted to mention um you know why god has allowed this suffering in their personal life the second thing because he wants the people to return or repent for their sin probably i will i believe as a pastor i believe this is one of the most common message in the whole bible repentance return back to god that is the most powerful word in the bible return back to god how we have to return back to god I, let me just read and go because because of the time lag uh, can somebody read uh, chapter 2 uh, verse number chapter 2 verse number Nineteen. Somebody can read two verse number nineteen. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands toward Him for the life of of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. Somebody can read out in Malayalam too. വീതികളുടെ തലയ്ക്കലൊക്കെയും തളർന്നു കിടക്കുന്ന നിന്റെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളുടെ ജീവരക്ഷയ്ക്കായി അവങ്കിലേക്ക് തലയുയർത്തുക in the land of jerusalem now but now the children are in the captivity you know when when you have a child you have all the, you know you have all the dreams about them you have all the promise about them you want to see the, the, their good future but what happened basically now when they they cannot see any sort of blessing from their children because they are in the captivity they don't get any you know they are 24 into 7 they are under the custody of a yoke yoke hallelujah probably you might think how this word is relating with the 21st century christians let me tell you in this morning time if our kids are under the custody of some yoke some spiritual yoke in this morning time i ask all the parents those who are hearing from this place or through the online let me tell you we need to pray for them hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord we need to repent we need to return back to god and we need to cry out for them malayalathi parayna vaakyam enikku bayangara ishtapettu ole ole kaliyanam alle stotram Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Vidi ude. Stotra. Oh, Stotra. Vidi ude. Thalikkelo kiyum. Jeevan ekshikyai. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thalarnu gadakkinna kunjingal de jeevan ekshikyai. Indi raavile nammal karihenam. Let me tell you. This is a high time to cry for our children. This is a high time to cry out for our children. Probably if you think. your ch- children are coming to church on sunday it is okay but you know their spiritual life at this moment maybe your pastor does not know your sunday school teacher does not know but as a parent as a father as a mother you know how their spiritual life would be at this moment you need to cry out then for this is the high time to cry out for them otherwise hallelujah there is a captivity that you are not going no no more going to see them anymore 
they are under the custody of some other spiritual forces hallelujah so bible says we have to repent and cry out hallelujah and now chapter 4 chapter 5 the words when they began to cry out in the presence of god what happening basically so that's what is happening basically now israel is crying out in the presence of god that's what we read on the 5 chapter 20 uh, five, chapter 5 verse number 21 Praise the Lord. They are crying. Lord restore our old days. What is the restoration of our old days? Maybe restoration of our old days. Maybe in an American background. Probably I can say the old days. We as a family or with our kids. We used to pray together. We used to eat together. We used to have a fellowship together. Praise the Lord. Our spiritual life was growing on everyday basis. Our prayer life was growing on everyday basis. But now what happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now Israel is crying out to the Lord. Lord, restore us on the days of our old. The days that we prayed with our children. That the days we spend our time with the children. Give us back, Lord. Give us back, Lord, the, oh, the moment that we enjoyed with our family. Give us back, Lord. That is the prayer that uh, now the book of uh, the prophet Jeremiah and Israel is crying out, doing over this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And even though the passage finished with that prayer, let me tell you, hallelujah, the passage does not end there. The conclusion is not there. Are you with me right now? Jeremiah chapter 29. As is going to read. 29 verse number 10 onwards. We will see the conclusion. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse number 10 onwards. Quickly, come on. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, yes. to give you a future and a hope. Yes. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Yes. And you will seek me and find me when you, when you search for me with all your heart. Yes. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Yes. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I've driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Yes, somebody can read out in Malayalam too, so that you can understand better. Go ahead. Yes. Mm. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah. Amen. Ah. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Oh, Rabba, Shandara, Baba. When you seek me with uh, all your heart, you will found me. Not only that, when you found me, the result will be, praise the Lord, I will restore you back into the place. I will restore you into the place where uh, your children left uh, hallelujah, into captivity. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, I have a great plan for you. Oh, Rabba, Shandara, Baba. That there, the Bible says, I have a greater plan for you. Stotra, Nya Ningle Kurchu, Nirubikina, Nirubanangal, Abba, so the Inna, Nyanarin, or the Tin Makella, Nan Makatrina, a hover day, Arula Padam, praise the Lord. I have a plan for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and Parna, 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 plan to prosper you, and you. And he give you future. That means uh, if you are the child of God, that is the promise of every child. God will give a prosperity. God will give you a future. 
Hallelujah. 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 In this morning time, as long as you live on this earth, this is the promise of God in your personal life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so there. In the Ravel, Namaki, the Avishu Lagaria, America, Lirikina, Namaka prosperity, Avishundu. Ningle five digit number, Akam, Paisa, Medicina, Ningikini, the Kulan, the prosperity went to the. You all, you have everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lindy Ravel, Ningle Kudaran, or a prosperity under. I think the pair on a spiritual prosperity. Oh, Rabba Shantara Baba. Lamshe the Yamtara Baba, Ipaparna the Wale, Stotra, Paladilum, in the Diabella Diaridra, Manipovic and Anipo in the Diabella on Dangila, Stotra, in the Diabella Anipovic in the Diaridra Nadibil, in the Diabella Devatuna, Ninda Melur, Samurda and Kario, and the Manasigamai, Shinicha, or the Diaridra Tulur, the Karnavogi Arika, Roga Paramai, in the Diabella Rogi, or the Diaridra Tulur, the Karnavogi Arika. Uraba Shantara Baba, Deva Tin in the Ravale, Nindamel, or Summer de Rivan Kario. He is a God of prosperity. He is a God of Summer He is a God of abundance. Uraba Shantara Baba, Riba Taraja, Haduri Amtara Baba, in the Ravale Naranya, and you power till I can or Deva Tin on the Samsari can villa. In the Ravale, Stotram, Wajanam Parahin, he Ravale Bishop Porta Deva Sanirik in the Gil. Those who have a hunger in spirit. Very clear. Bible very clearly says. Those who have a hunger in spirit. That means, uh, that means I am hunger. That means uh, he is poor. He is struggling with uh, food. That means uh, he is going through the poverty right now. But the Bible says, if you are going through the poverty, I can give you, I can feed you. I can feed you. I can feed you with the spiritual gift. I can feed you with a hallelujah emotional strength. I can feed you with a oh, supernatural abundance of a oh, Holy Spirit upon your personal life. Oh, Rabba Shantara Baba. Issue in the Namatil. 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 Or they were by the Luvanda the Muru and he was an atil edit under. In the Ravale Stotra, he was an atil. In the Ravale, they were there and then a Kenda in the Ravale Vanda. Other Admi Vidalana Vanda, Admi Vidalito. In the Ravale Ninda Shari Latina, or your Saukimana Vanda, Saukimai. In the Ravale, I'm an abundance of Saukimai. Then he went in the Ravale and Velipudo. Lamshe the Yamtara Baba, Ribotara Baba, Rection probably you might need oh, Stotra, some dollars in this morning time. He is ready to give that for you. Hallelujah! 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 Namade Avishan Larinia, Name Pulatunur Deva Mada. He, Hallelujah, he is a God of abundance. In the Ravana Trevor Vishal Sigano, Avan in the Summer Dura Deva Mada. Eshu in the Namatil, Eshu in the Namatil, Eshu in the Namatil, in the Ravalani Jen, oh, they died in the Trud and Yerikatulla, Kastadi, where did he Sagicha, Suraba Shandaraba, Nuta Shanti and Nugamacha, Nina Kiraki, Nini Admi Jute, Ilai Machewanala. Please be stand up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bible says, I just concluding. Praise the Lord. When you come back into covenantal relationship. With repentance and uh, praise the Lord. With uh, tears, lamentations. Bible says, I will prosper you. I will prosper you. What all the prosperity you need in this morning time, I am ready to prosper you. It's not, Pastor Akila said, Bible says, I will prosper you. That is the word from God in this morning time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. We praise Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Shantara, Jada, Hadara, Jada, Jada, Lamshida, Ajara, Babodi, Amtara, Baba, Eshu, and the Namathe, Oh, Rabba Hamdara, Nagade, Admi, Avastagal, Kinidabele, or the prosperity, Eshu, and the Namathe, in the Pagali, Deva Sapaka, the Velipati, Atta Pidave, 